Hello, hello, members of the Geekery. Anaris here with another exciting StarCraft 2 broadcast. Today, we are going to be kicking it with another 4 versus 4, this time on the map that I forgot the name of it, but I absolutely hate. Now, we're going to go over the players real quick. We have Nico, Neko, whatever, the purple Protoss, spawning over here in the exposed position. Sunny, Zerg over here on the right. We have S. Brugby. SB Rugby, maybe Strong Bad Rugby, I don't know. That would certainly be a thing to see. And also, Zrytex, Zrytex, whatever, against Huskies, Problem Sir, Spanishiwa, and Alpha Baby. So we have another four versus four. Now, let's talk about this for just a minute. Because I know, from my perspective, I hate this map. Why do I hate this map? Well, a particular thing that I have coined a term for, and that is the bitch spot. That is this position right here, way out exposed, that is always susceptible to cannon rushes down here, followed up by Marine SCV all-ins. Pretty much just whoever gets the spot is, well, like I've said, it has that name for a reason. So I decide to go ahead as a general rule of thumb to follow uh, follow this line of logic of throwing down a fast forge and basically just throwing down a cannon here and maybe a cannon here. Uh, I throw down a pylon actually, but I, I wait for the cannon until I know that there's actually going to be something down here as well. So I don't want to spend too much money to it, but at the same time I do have to kind of take some defensive measures because when you get into the higher leagues of 4v4, pretty much everybody who uh, is higher, you're just going to see them do cheese, all in, stuff like that. Very difficult to deal with in a pug, but somehow, sometimes, we manage. So we're going to see build pretty much just continue on. We have Sunny's Overlord going to be heading down here. We have Alpha Baby going ahead and throwing down an extractor after pool. And Spanishua spawning as Protoss. Now... What his plan is with double gas, I, I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see. I would try to analyze it, but Spanishiwa, when he plays off-race, he has a very unique style. And by unique, I mean he likes to go for one or two units in particular and kind of start uh, doing some wonky plays. Like he'll go Mass Reaper, Mass Hellion, stuff like that. I think one game he went Mass Command Center, so just generally having a good time there. But with this double gas, he will be afforded the ability to get some tech rather quickly, so we'll see what happens as that is stockpiled. Meanwhile, Cannon's going down one gateway as well. You see I've completely walled off again. I knew that we were facing up against double Zerg, so I figured Mass Ling all in early. That's something that we have to be worried about. And we do have the Roach Warren going down, so with the Macro Hatchery already going here, we see that we're going to have some early tier unit pressure from the Red Zerg. And the Blue Protoss dropping down a Twilight Council, going to be shooting directly up to that. With one gate sitting on double gas right now, I'm also going to be a little curious to see what he does. If he's, if he's going to go for Dark Templar, maybe he's going to go for Fast Blink. I would like to see a couple additional gateways. If that's going to be the case, we'll keep an eye on him. And Spanishua, continuing on, he's got uh, one Stalker, and of course, Gateway Warp Gate technology on the way. Huskies over here. You see, he has gone for fast double gas as well. He has got his robotics facility on the way. Going to be able to get some Observers, some Immortals. That is a unit that he has fallen in love with lately. Oh, so dear to his heart, the Immortal. I mean, hey, it rips up armored units like there's no tomorrow, so always an enjoyable thing to see. And we do have a couple Zerglings out here trying to chase away the uh, the probe. Wait. Oh, okay, that was, that was... Wait, is that Alpha Baby's probe chasing... Spin what? What is going on here? This is not supposed to be happening. I feel like that was actually illegal, not allowed to be on TV and against some regulations. I don't know. But we do have one Zergling coming down here from Sunny. Going to be scouting out the natural sea. Okay, no expansion just yet. Not running on one himself either. He's got an evolution chamber, so we could be seeing possibly weapons one, armor one for those Zerglings running around right now. And we do also have myself with a robotics facility on the way. Again, delayed, but I've also got the weapons one coming on the way to make up for it. And decide to throw down a couple additional gateways as well. Pretty much just plan, trying to play catch up. That's kind of the trade-off you do with that early, uh, early fours. You are kind of delayed a little bit with your tech otherwise. But... We have Rugby coming down here, dropping a proxy pylon. What could he be doing? Well, let's take a look up here and find out. We've got a Dark Shrine now completed. We also have three Dark Templar on the way. So will these do any significant damage? Obviously, to my base, no. Not going to do squat. He's going to have to bust his way through a pylon. And you see that actually he tried to come up here. I think he just one ate his way and he got stuck on the ledge. But... 
Husky spots that pile on as he does take that expansion, is able to quickly dispatch of that. I don't know if he saw the actual Dark Templar, though. I do also want to point out there's another proxy pile on going down here. Now, uh-oh, Spanishiwa does not have any detection. I do believe that I send down an observer here fairly soon and take care of that without too many problems. Yep, there it goes right there as soon as it pops, and Blank is about 50% complete, so we're going to see that from Spanishiwa. Try to keep his probes out of harm's way. The poor probes that are running around trying to get gas, holding on for dear life, not going to be able to uh, to live for very long as this Dark Templar continues its harassment. Don't think we have anything going on up here. No, we do not. This Dark Templar will get taken out, however, bringing that attack to a quick halt. Over here, Alpha Baby got uh, Armor 1 on the way, just about complete, and we do already have that Metabolic Boost upgrade sitting good as well. And that one Dark Templar just sitting over here. Now, I do have a cannon that finished off. I didn't build this to hold off a bunch of stuff down here. I mean, obviously, it's quite exposed. I got it because I saw... Okay, well, if he's going to send a Dark Templar and leave it parked down here while that cannon was building, then I'm just going to go ahead and make it way out here so that way we can catch any scout, any uh, stealth units that happen to be sneaking across. This will be kind of our little stealth indicator, letting us know if things are going to be going wrong, but possibly some crazy uh, stealthy shenanigans. So up here, Nico is continuing on with the bio play. We see him pretty much just doing his own thing. We also have a command center going down for him, hoping to expand, possibly double expand to this island once he gets an SCV over there. He can, of course, take both of those expansions at once. As far as income goes, you guys can just see what's going on with that. Huskies obviously has the natural, or not the natural, well, yeah, not really natural, it's mine, but it's okay, I gave it to him on extended loan, and a robotics bay on the way for myself, so looking to get some Colossi tech here pretty soon, as I pretty much just got a couple of mortals right now. I realize that I could have probably put that gas other places, but again, I'm not really too sure what's going to be coming down the line from these guys. So, fearful of a mid-game attack, I decided to go ahead and throw some gas into that. Now, Spanishua coming over here with the Stalkers is going to be looking to possibly do some harassment. He checks the high yield first. We also have Alpha Baby's Overlord coming over here, just barely getting out of range of those Zerglings. I think the Overlord, yeah, did not see that. And so, maybe what's, uh, maybe the plan here, yes, okay, this is what's going on. I actually gave Spanishua control of my Observer and just said, hey, Go for it. Do whatever you want. And we see he has now doubled up. And I've got another one coming over here, actually, with the intention of giving him vision of the upper ground over here in a little bit. And just kind of generally keeping an eye. You'll see the very, very thick concentration of SCVs there just begging for an attack. We look up here at Sunny, who is just, oh my god, some Zerglings, man. He is all about those lings. And now we have the link up into the mineral line. We're going to see the bunch of SCVs going down there super quickly. I wish I could actually... Actually, we'll just do that. Units lost. We don't, unfortunately don't have the functionality of Control R, but we do have the units lost, which is the next best thing. And we do have one observer getting taken out. You see, Spanishi was was barely able to live. And oh man, he's gonna have the blink to get out of here. Oh, but he is gonna do some nice blink micro to at least try to do as much damage as possible. He knows these zerglings are gonna be out for blood. And actually, Gip gonna get two additional free kills here. But here comes Huskies and Alpha Baby hoping to come in and save Spanishi. While will we be able to? Do it. Nice blink, allowing Alpha Baby to wrap up those Zerglings. I finally decided to go ahead and bust out as well myself, and I do want to point out there is a Nidus Worm on the way for Zrytex down here in Spanishiwa's main, where he is very vulnerable indeed. You see all those forces kind of running around right now, and also with the Nidus is identified, the location is known, and Nico has kind of a spotting Viking over here. I think there's an Overlord over there as well. But, yes, the units are flooding in, folks. What can we do about it? Well, we do have one Colossus here. You can see that is actually my own. And a ton of roaches. It's funny, when I saw those Zerglings coming in, I'm like, I told Spanishu, oh, that's not that bad, man. Just run your probes. You got this. Oh, God, there's roaches everywhere. And so we did have to go a full uh, full assault to try to take out this Nidus. It is taken out, so that's good. And we have wrapped it up here. Final units lost so far. You can just kind of take a quick look at that. And now back to the income tab, where you see I do have an expansion on the way. Just started that a little bit ago. It is very much delayed. I've tried to kind of basically just get out a whole bunch of stuff, trying to make up for the fact that I was kind of contained there for a while. I'm still really worried about an attack here. Again, that's just the mentality that I have when you're in the bitch spot. But you see I've got plenty of probes ready to transfer down whenever they are needed, and I am going to be taking out uh, maybe this pile on here as well. Yes, that is going to go down here very soon. You see I've still got my immortals alive, so they're just going to rip through that pile on, and now 
Boss Manish while coming over here. He does have vision of the high ground once again. But there are Zealots and Archons coming down here looking to counterattack. You see the SCVs were actually pulled way over here. And now the Terran is looking to come and try to defend as well. The Medivacs maybe, may be healing up the Zealots. Yes, indeed, I do believe that is the case. Spanishua forced to run far, far away, not able to defend against all of these forces. I mean, even the Zerglings coming in here. You see, they are two and one. The Zerg player now finally has a couple of drones starting to work on that, so his expansion is going to be good. He's going to have to get some units in the gas as well. And here we go, folks. Another Night of Swarm, this time coming into Husky's Mineral Line. There is one cannon, so that is going to draw the aggro of those Zerglings, and basically Basically, Husky is going to try to live for as long as possible by bringing his probes and trying to sandwich around the Photon Cannon, which works to an extent, but only delays the inevitable here, so we're going to see those probes start to die, but... Oh no, Husky's Colossus is going to get taken down. It's really the only unit that he has at this point. But the loss of that Colossus will buy his units enough time to get out and basically allow his income to continue once this goes through. So really, the loss of the Colossus is not going to be that big of a deal. He was trying to delay this this right here for as long as possible. We're going to see that go down. This Knight is play very annoying, man, but look at this down here. We have another attack from Spanishua blinking up here, taking out the command center. I believe, yeah, it actually killed it. And here comes a delayed response from the, uh, from the blue player. You're going to see Rugby come in and try to hold this off, but... I mean, Spanishwa is only a blink away from safety, so that's not going to be too much of a problem. Do want to point out that Overlord is still alive down here, so you're seeing there that Overseer. So you're going to see that continue to harass. Spanishwa, I think a few Salkers got left back up there, could not blink out quickly enough. But we do decide to come up here and give a little bit of support. Alpha Baby tried to finish finish off any Zerglings that he can find, but you could see, yes indeed, now Sunny Durang directly into the Roaches, going to be taking those out. Boom, one in one upgrades. They were able to easily hold off that Zergling attack, or at least what's left of it. So now, units lost to this crazy game so far. Just kind of take a look at that and see. Uh, Spanishwa has also lost a lot of resources, basically, that had to do with the attack in his main, but more importantly, a lot of Stalkers with those Zerglings getting the surround as well. So, Neko, Miko does not have a command center working at his base at this point in time. And also, you see he's unloading a ton of SCVs, looking to do his thing there, and my base is looking pretty good. This Dark Templar is just still hanging out here, man. I don't know what the deal is with that, but we do have Zealot Archon versus a whole bunch of forces. Not something you want to try to engage by yourself, and Rugby does realize that. So he's going to try to pull back. Take a look. He does have two weapons upgrades, so that's going to work out very well for him. We also do have an Overseer possibly coming in, maybe looking to do a Nidus in my base, although I don't think that's going to work out too well for him. The next Nidus, I'm not exactly sure where that is at. It looks like it is down here at my natural expansion where we still are kind of deleting getting those probes out there. But uh, I'm more focused pretty much right now on trying to make sure that we don't die a horrible death. My units are on the front line, so we're trying to make sure we watch out for these Zealots, get these Colossi back, and throw down some Force Bills. you see those Archons busting those down very quickly. We decided to just go ahead and lose this expansion, letting it go, not even going to try to defend it. Spanishua is going to maybe do a little bit of damage, basically delay the attack down here into the next one. But we are going to make some great advances here up on the front lines where the Archons are getting taken out, and finally all that's left are just a few Marines, Marauders, Medivacs, and of course we do have our giant roach, the, or the or giant roach army, which is going to be tanking lots of damage for both Huskies and myself, as we basically have all of the support units here. We also have Spanish about taking that high yield expansion, and we are finally going to be pushing the advance towards the main base of, who are we going for here? We're going for SB Rugby, going in and basically taking out this proxy pile and canceling the warp in right here. Oh, will we get it? Oh, yes, partial cancellation, few zealots warp in, but not that big of a deal, able to quickly dispatch that. And looking, we can see that Spanishwa and Husky is able to wrap that up. Rugby decides to go ahead and leave the game, not quite able to do a whole lot. Of course, Husky is here, has a ton of probes that will be long-distance mining. And we are going to be finishing off this attack up here, taking out SP Rugby, basically securing his income. Of course, that's what I've got my... Uh, my Colossi down here working on taking out the probes first and then moving up to the main base. We know that this guy is pretty much out of the picture. He does not have a command center that we are aware of. Little do we know that there is a double base over here. Actually, do we know about that? No. No, actually, we, we do not. That is incredible, actually. But uh, plenty of Ultras have come over here for Sunny, which is an interesting choice considering the fact that we do have a considerable amount of Immortals as well. We do also have the Colossi, and here comes Spanishua plus Alpha, baby. You see the Roaches are going to be tanking those once again, doing a great job with that. Spanishua rolling up the support, and I think we ping down here because we see a Nidus Worm, like, literally right next to this expansion. But the ballsiest Nidus I have ever seen. Just busting up through here, going to get taken out in a matter of two seconds. One, and boom. A couple Sockers should be able to mop that up very quickly as we continue our advance into Sunny's base. 
where we see Zerklings coming in, trying to mount basically one final defense, some nice micro there. We'll see him blinking back for Spanish while trying to get up here, do some damage as soon as possible. Way saturated here on this drone line, man. To tell you what, he is just looking to really gather the minerals as quickly as possible. But we do have play players leaving the game, so that is going to be a GG from the Purple Terran and basically bringing this game to a halt. So that's going to be it for this 4v4, guys. I got a couple more. Actually, I think I have a couple from us, uh, Husky, Sci Starcraft, and myself playing with... I think we just went with a pug for that time. But I'll see if I can find some of those games as well as bring some more 1v1s. I just thought these 4v4s were kind of fun casual, uh, you know, deviations from the normal higher level style of game that we watch. So, again, thank you for watching it. If you like it, please thumbs it up. Again, that's only if you like it. I mean, if you didn't, leave me a comment and let me know why. 4v4s are a little bit hard to analyze sometimes, so kind of keep that in mind. A lot of going on. And that's pretty much all I got. If you like the, if you like the stuff, make sure you subscribe. See you next video.